All right, welcome again. Uh, today we're looking at the largest series product problem. Uh, it's a part of a class of problems known as sliding window problems. Um, what you do is you typically look at a subset of a collection uh, of a fixed particular length and determine uh, some kind of operation on that subset. Uh, if you go on leak code, you'll find a number of these type of problems. Uh, minimum window substring is one of them. So in a minimum window, you get an input, uh, which is something you iterate over, and a fixed length substring. And in this case, you're finding the minimum window substring. So you might say, okay, A, D, A, B, C, the first instance is right here. The next instance might be there. The next instance might be there. The last one might be there. So you're ter you're, you're performing a window um, that you're, you're you're sliding a particular subset. Um, there's lots of these types of problems. So the one we're looking at is a the longest uh, series product. So given a string of numbers, we want to determine in a fixed length span, we want to determine the product, uh, the maximum product. And so what we're going to be looking at in with Rust is we're going to be looking at iterators, coercing a character to a value, looking at map operations, and of course, uh, sliding windows. Uh, when we're done with that, we'll, I'm going to re-implement this using a more performant version uh, that doesn't use some of the common uh, API methods that we'll be using here in this first implementation. We'll kind of compare the two. Um, all right, so let's get started. So uh, what we're going to start out is we need to we need to iterate over the string. Uh, if you watched a previous video I did. I looked at a string and I converted it into bytes and I iterated over those bytes. So what we're going to do in this, we're going to iterate over the characters and we'll be using uh, some internal API uh, or we'll be using an API method uh, to convert it, the character into a value. So let's look at that. So we'll say string digits, we have a string value. And I'm going to say that's the chars method, right? So we'll get a string. String slice consists of valid UTF-8 characters. Uh, so we're going to look at chars. And let's take just a quick look at that. All right, string chars. String slice consists of valid UTF-8 characters. Remember that char represents a Unicode scalar value and might not match your idea what a character is. So this is saying that you know it might be represented by multiple bytes, but uh, in this case uh, we don't necessarily care because we're looking at just digits. And now I'm going to use the map operation. Uh, so now that we have an iterator, we're actually going to call map. Right and map we can pass a closure value uh, in order to convert our character. So I'm going to pass we've got a, a character, G, a C, so you can see that it's a char. And then on the char, uh, let's just look at the API for that. So within char, we have a method here called two digits. And we can actually pass a base of the type of digit we want to convert to. So we're going to pass in base 10. right? And what we get back is a option. Uh, with an option, you've got a sum value or a none value. Uh, when you get an option, there's this other method that you can provide where, by default, it'll return the result. Uh, unwrapped, or you can do this OK or, 
where if you get a none value, I actually want to return this error. And you'll see why in a second. Uh, finally, we're going to call collect. Uh, collect is kind of like a transform where you can take an iterator and you convert it into something else. Um, so we can actually uh, result uh, is the value that we want, that, that we're returning from each map uh, operation here. And uh, result actually implements this thing called a from iterator. And a from iterator allows you to uh, do something like this, where the from it it'll take each element of the iterator. However, if it encounters an error, then it can decide no further elements are taken. So you can do that by saying, okay, you know what? Um, normally, I have an iteration of a value or an error. However, in this case, I actually want to bring that error up to the top. So we have to specify that through here. Right, so we say we're going to specify that we want it in the form of a vector. Otherwise, we want the error if we see one. And then there's this shortcut. Uh, there's a way to short circuit um, in Rust. It's kind of like a return, or it's kind of like a uh, an unwrap method, right? So so what happens is if you have this, um, right, so you, you can actually unwrap the value or it can propagate the error up. So an example of this is, let's say you have an error where you're reading a file. Um, if you press, if you type the question mark character, it'll unwrap to the actual file that you can write against. Otherwise, it'll just return the error at that time. So we're going to do that at that time. Right, so now we have our results, which is just a vector. Right, not enough things. And now we're going to use our special Windows operation. Uh, this is a great function here. You can uh, use, you get sub slices at a particular length. So we're going to say that. Windows span. And then we're going to map each of those windows. Now I'm going to map each of the values. Uh, I need to convert them to U64. And now uh, that we have U64 values, there is something called a uh, product method here. Right? So product will take all the values of that iterator and multiply them together. And then you can call so we got windows, we got map, iterator, and, oops, and then of that, we can call max, return the max value. And then finally, we're just going to call uh, if we have an error at any point. We're going to say, okay. Uh, so this error span too long, I'm using it to kind of specify that if I call this uh, Windows uh, operation, that by default it will return none uh, when it tries to iterate and it's too large. So that's why I have that. Uh, and there we go. So that's that implementation. I'll just do a quick. Ah, 
So we have one extra edge case for this particular test, which is the span happens to be zero. Um, it's just a edge case of this particular exercise. Uh, but most cases, we won't have to worry about that. All right, there we go. Um, so an alternative implementation of this would be to use what's known as a uh, VEC DQ, which is essentially a global ring buffer. Uh, the, we'll keep that original span that we had before. We're going to add this other edge case where we're just going to right and this is where the bulk of our code is so what we'll do is we'll use our back DQ right and then we need a product that we're always looking at and when we do uh, our multiplications we need to maintain something which will hold our max value and then we're uh, I'm going to just start iterating over the string, the characters like we did before. Same thing. Now, if their value is none in this case, uh, I'm going to short circuit the entire loop. you wouldn't do this in Rust, uh, but I have seen it where you can just use this return uh, keyword to kind of simultaneously break out of a loop and return the uh, value that you're looking at. And it's commonly used for uh, things like returning an error and a result. Otherwise, unwrap that, convert it to U64, and then we're going to use this push front method, uh, which is in the here, right? And then we'll want to multiply existing value, and then if this happens to be larger than a span, we need to remove that value from the front. Go ahead and divide that, right? Finally, same as a span window, and our prop happens to be greater than max. Max is now prop. Now, there is one thing that we forgot to do here, which is we are not handling zeros. So, if we count a zero, this value is going to be zero, and then we'll get a can't divide by zero error as well here, and then so we don't want that. So what we're going to do is use basically a, what's called a reference counter. So we'll keep track of our zeros as we push them and pop them off. Right. So we'll still push it to the front of the DQ. Uh, however, if it's if this is a zero, we're just going to increment that and don't let it affect our product. Otherwise, if it's greater than span, we are going to pop it off. But again, we don't want to divide it happens to be zero, right? So, so we're just going to decrement our reference counter. And then finally, when do we only want to um, update the maximum value is when the last set of uh, subset has no zeros in it. Right, so that's that value there. Oops, and then finally we need to actually return the value of max. Right. And that's it. So let's go ahead and test that again.
and passes. Uh, yeah, so in this type of implementation, it's going to be much more performant because we're not iterating over every single slice to form the products and, and form the max value. Um, in this case, we're, we are actually just shifting a vector over by one each time. Um, this is a very effective strategy for a lot of the leak code uh, sliding window problems. And I highly recommend uh, taking a look at some of those and applying this technique. Thanks for watching.